I first heard about Vietnam all around 1960, 61. Uh, that was right after the failed, that's what they say, Bay of Pigs invasion. I enlisted, I volunteered. I wanted to go to, to the Marines at first, but I have a bad left eye and the Marines wouldn't take me then, so I enlisted in the Army. Uh, I didn't like them. I, I feel that even though you may not like what is happening, but you still have to participate. You can't ask for nothing if you don't give nothing. between boot camp and civilian life. Um, discipline, you know, in, in boot camp, you do what they say, when they say it, how they say it. In civilian life, uh, you have choices and a lot of people don't take the, don't do the right thing. It wasn't hard for me because I came from a disciplinary dad and mom. <laughs> so, you know, it, it wasn't that hard for me to uh, do, okay, you're gonna do this now, you're gonna do that now. We all had, uh, at home we had chores we had to do then. You know, you don't wait till later on to do it, you do it now. So that wasn't hard for me to adapt. Oh, wow, it's a, <laughs> it's a lot of funny memories. Uh, because you are thrown in this, uh, you're thrown in with this one barrack. You got all kinds of people from some of everywhere. You got different cultures. Uh, everything is a lot different. Uh, little things happen that you, you know you laugh about. Oh, this guy, uh, he messed up his bed, so they dumps everything out. You know, this guy can't even walk a straight line, you know, little, you know, stuff like that. And then you all come together in one thing and it's, it can be good. I was sentenced in uh, 68 uh, during the Tet Offensive. Um, going there, Different uh, ideas went through mine. Oh wow, what do I expect? I had heard this is happening. I heard that is happening. Uh, uh, I came in at Cameron Bay. Uh, that's kind of like central uh, South Vietnam. I came in there. And from there I was sent to, uh, well, Benoit. That's right below Saigon where the 1st Signal Battalion was based under fire. When I land, when we landed in at Cameron Bay, we landed under fire. There was incoming rounds uh, when we landed. So we had to literally come out of the airplane into a bunker. I was a radio operator. I, I delivered, uh, I not delivered messages, <laughs> But I got, uh, I called in airstrikes, I called artillery strikes, I coordinated uh, between uh, platoons and squads, stuff like that. It, it wasn't that hard to do because you were trained for it. Uh, the unexpected, uh, well, it, it's just like being trained to be a, uh, I would say, a firefighter or a police officer. Uh, you don't know what you're going into, but you have put that mindset in your mind, okay, I'm going here. This could happen, that could happen.
uh, two different aspects. Once we were in, if we were in base camp, a uh, uh, typical day would be we would uh, we would get up, uh, go to the mess hall, uh, you know, lay around, lounge around, relax for a minute. But if we were out in the field, uh, we you didn't have typical days out in the field. Uh, one day just rolled right into the next. Your instinct then was just survival. What do I do now? How do I can get? to the next sunrise or to the next sunset. <laughs> oh, we'd go to the, uh, uh, every base camp had, had a little club. We'd, we'd go to the club, uh, uh, play pool or, you know, stuff like that, uh, listen to records and all, just relax. Mm -hmm. Well, it, uh, some um, was jungle, overgrown vines, bushes, all. Some was rice paddies. Uh, you had to adapt to the, the heat, uh, the rain. Sometimes you were completely wet, uh, and sometimes you were uh, completely dry. Uh, some of the uh, equipment that you had, you had to... Uh, Steady, keep your equipment clean and all. Uh, the moisture would mess with it, the dirt, the sand, the mud, uh, all of those. Uh, so you had to, you had to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. What was the public opinion or kind of public perception in the U.S. about Vietnam as you went in? Like as you went to Vietnam? Uh, we shouldn't be there. Uh, oh, there was um, demonstrations uh, all over the place. Uh, what was it, at uh, Kent University where the uh, students were killed. There were, there were, everybody was speaking out against it. Uh, the political aspects of it, uh, that's not quite in a soldier's mind. Because if we listen to a lot of that, or we let that consume our mind, we were putting ourselves in danger. Uh, the difference between us, we could, we would see firsthand, like if they had on the news, oh, uh, 10,000 troops came down from Vietnam. We, in the field, we could see that, hey, it wasn't 10,000, it was 20,000. <laughs> so that's, that's where our basis of our information, a lot of it, and how we would deal with it. Uh, we all have a saying that if you, re if you read something or somebody tell you something about Vietnam, believe it. Especially some of the veterans that, that was over there, if they tell you something about it, believe it. you had to depend on that guy right next to you. He had your back, you had his back. Uh, a lot of times uh, you, well, I wondered, would he have been my friend in the world? Okay, and I think about it. Well, I might not have visited or uh, been at his house all the time, or he may not have been at my house all the time. But while you are there, while you're in Vietnam, you have to depend on each other. You have to have that closeness, whereas 
you're almost thinking alike. Okay, that's just like it here um, at, at, at a job. If you are employed at a job, okay, the guy that's working right next to you, like I say, you may not party with him on Friday night or y'all may not go to the bar or whatever, but during the working hours, you have to depend on each other because how can you do your job? He's not doing his and that. So you have to have that communication as far as that goes. And that's what, that's what the, how can I say it? That's what the war would teach a person to do or that what the service would teach a person to know how to do. I had, uh, I had a good feeling of, about them. Uh, you're at war, and they were defending their country, their rights, uh, what they believed, uh, was the same way here. If uh, some of them came over here to engage war or whatever, hey, this is my home. I defend my home every way I can. Same way with them. They were defending their way of life, their home, their culture. How, I mean, were you exposed to a lot of the civilians or no? Yes, yes. It, well, in base camp, we always, we always had uh, 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 Mama San or Papa San. They would come, they would clean our, our tents, they would clean our, uh, you know, the hooch, uh, things like that. But... When I was up in um, Quan Loy, I was made an honorary member of the Mount Yard tribe when I was up there. So for the Mount Yards there, I did have a, well, a close relationship with them. Now is that, an, sounds unusual? Yes. Um, to have done? So how were you able to, to be able to kind of? Uh, well, uh, we had, it was a few of them that that uh, the, I guess you would say, the government employed there. They, they clean out hooch and all that. So I began to talk to them and, and all, and uh, a couple of them, we got a close relationship, and they invited me to their village. And I went, and that was, I was accepted by them. how um, you would have these kind of Vietnamese civilians come in um, and be friends by day and then by night you know some of them were the ones attacking did you experience any of that or was that a concern for you while you were over there yes that's always a concern uh, you can't quote tell them apart <laughs> okay uh, it was like uh, like they would come in to the okay now, did you see the movie Green Beret? Have, have you, uh, did you see where uh, they, were, they were in the base camp and they had uh, the uh, Vietnamese civilians uh, in there and they saw one of the uh, soldiers, the uh, Vietnamese soldiers was walking off the, uh, the perimeter he was, he was stepping off, measuring it, all uh, things like that happened quite often there. Uh, a lot of times we knew that they were army men by day and VC by night. Yes, that, that does happen. And it, it even happens now in Iraq and Afghanistan. You, you, you don't know who your enemy is. That's the, that's the difference between the wars now and before. Like in uh, World War II or World War I, the Korean War, you knew who your enemy was. It was right there. But uh, in, in Vietnam and the wars since Afghanistan, Iraq, you, you, you don't know.
Yes. Uh, I would say that during the, the Vietnam era kind of brought the races together because uh, uh, there was no uh, black units, there were no white units there, everything was mostly integrated. But within that, you still had your bigoted people, you still had your prejudiced people, and also as a, uh, a big majority or as a big block, no, but you still had your little pocket over here, your little pocket over there, which, you know, that would come out. But as far as a overall discrimination of that, uh, Vietnam era brought a lot of that together. It, it helped out a lot because I knew that, uh, like I say, I was a radio operator. So if I helped the uh, black person, I had to help the white person. If I helped the Chinese, because we had Chinese, uh, like I say, it, it, that, that was like a melting pot. You had all different types of religion, all different types of uh, cultures. So if I helped it one, I helped the other. So that's, uh, that brought in that there, there's no difference. If I cut my finger, you cut your finger, hey, my blood ain't black, your blood is not white, this blood is red. So if your blood can help me and mine can help you, if there's a problem with that, that's on you, that's not on me. When you were there, when you witnessed combat, what was it like? Can you share some of your experiences? Scared. Uh, anybody that tells you that they was not scared, <laughs> it don't work like that. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're not scared to a point where you are you know, but you, you, you are just, how can you put it? Um, you're kind of, you're aware of what could happen, you know, in that different situations, and you have prepared your mindset for it, but back in, that's human nature, back in the back of your head, you still think, Oh, this could happen, that could happen. But I always knew, as far as I was concerned, I was coming home. I would say it's just recently, well, I would say maybe the past, maybe 10, 15 years or so, that I can really sit down and, you know, kind of like talk to uh, about it, uh, discuss it or anything. and. Even then, there's certain things that I don't touch. Uh, because of the stigma and also the, uh, just talking about certain things would bring up memories, uh, subconsciousness, things that you really don't want to dwell on. That's a good word for it. Don't want to dwell on it. Mm -hmm. When I got out, it was uh, certain things like I wouldn't wear anything that showed that I was in the service, you know, anything like that, uh, until it was much, much later.
journey home like? Relief. Uh, that's about the best I can put it. <laughs> Relief. And, and then it's, uh, you're thinking back in your mind uh, because you had heard, we had heard stories about uh, people spitting on the soldiers that was coming in, uh, calling them baby killers, you know, and all of this. So in the back of your mind, you kind of wonder, what kind of reception? Am I going to get, you know, at the airport uh, or whatever? Am I going to, you know, run into any of those people, uh, anything like that? I know, and when we came in, I came in at Fort Lewis, Washington, immediately they told us to come out of our uniforms. So as to, uh, you know, not, we wouldn't cause any anything, but they didn't want us to be caught up in anything like that. I just came back from putting my life on the line. Uh, it could happen at, at any moment, could be my last moment. And here I am back in the States, uh, I done made it, uh, I done fought for the freedom and all this, and here I am treated huh, terrible, terrible, like uh, during uh, World War II, they came home to ticker tape parades, <laughs> you know, all this. And here we come, we got to sneak through the back door. No, no, that, that feeling, oh, wow, here I am and, and done this. Uh, that's the politics of it. <laughs> that's why I, uh, most uh, Vietnam veterans, they, we hate to talk about the politics of it because that, that gets under our skin. If you wasn't there, keep your mouth shut. You know, basically, that's it. You, you, you are talking about uh, stuff that you may have, what, read in the paper or uh, you may have took something out of context or whatever. If you, you know, even if you didn't go, if you went over there, even if you didn't go uh, in the field, even if you wasn't in combat, combat on a day-to-day -day basis, you still had a, a working knowledge of it. So if you didn't have that working knowledge of it, shut up, because you don't, you don't know. What is the most important lesson our generation should know about the Vietnam War? Hmm. We did what we were told to do. Okay, and uh, to bring it out a, a little bit more, like I said, we wasn't concerned more or less about the politics of it. We were soldiers. We were told to go over there and do a job. That was our job, to come back home alive. <laughs> okay. you know, forget about all the other stuff. Our job was to go over there and to come back home alive. And the different things that might have happened, that, that's beyond our control. Okay, for an instance, I was a radio operator. Okay, if I called in airstrikes, if I called in a artillery strike, I don't know for sure that a little kid was there or, you know, a baby was there or a civilian was there. All I, all I called in was the coordinates to where to, to drop the bomb or to make the airstrike. Okay, as far as all the other stuff, I have no idea. We always have this thing that there's no morality in war. There's not. Kill or be killed. Like, uh, who was it? Uh, Saddam, Saddam Hussein. How many people 
did he have walking around dressed up just like him, looking just like him? How many times were, were, did he go over and get among the civilians? See? That's why I say there's no morality in, in war. It's either kill or be killed. This is my second year in vet doc. I decided to take vet doc for a second year because the first year it just stole my heart. Hearing stories from multiple veterans of their time in war, their time overseas or in the home front from their families and how much it's meant to them to have them interviewed or to talk about it, to hear about what their family dynamic was like while they were overseas and fighting for our country. I first heard of Willie last year. I picked him from a random list of names. All I knew was that his name was Willie Evans and that he fought in Vietnam. And one of my classmates said that she interviewed him and that his interview was great and I should take a look at it. So I got it at the end of my first year and started looking at it over summer and got to work as soon as school started. What I've learned from Willie is that War is never ending. It never leaves you. It's always with you. And it's something that should never be repeated. History shouldn't be repeated, which is why it's history. I've learned that even the smallest of things, like saying welcome home or thank you for your service to a veteran, can really, really impact them in a special way. Every story is unique and every lesson learned is important and I am eternally grateful for the opportunity to learn and to grow from this experience with Willie's interview. I truly have no words for what this class has meant for me.